Time to get a quick take on the economy. For that, we're joined by economist Mervyn Jebaraj with the UA Walton College of Business Center for Business and Economic Research. Good to have you with us, Mervyn. Good morning, Ruby. New GDP figures show that in 2017, Arkansas saw its state GDP, gross domestic product, grow 1.1%. Now, there is some volatility there. Uh, in the third quarter, declined 1.9%, but it grew 2.5% in the fourth quarter. Uh, tell me, what can we trust is at work in the economy? I think what you're seeing in Arkansas in particular is that in general, the economy is doing pretty well, but large uh, or states where there is a large portion of the economy that is dependent on agriculture tend to have more volatile GDP numbers because the movement of those commodity prices really does affect the GDP going from month to month. But in general, when you're looking at the big sectors in Arkansas outside of agriculture that do well, those largely mirror the sectors doing well nationally as well, especially around manufacturing. As we've discussed here before, there's a little bit of a mini boom going on in manufacturing in Arkansas. That's a lot more non-durable goods manufacturing, particularly food processing, a little more, a little bit in goods producing as well. But in general, you know, those are the reasons why the economy here in Arkansas is growing, but the swings can be attributed in part uh, to the wild swings in agricultural uh, revenues and production from a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis. Now, looking at the national economy, we just got the first quarter uh, GDP figures for 2018, came in at about 2.3 percent, which is a little bit lower than where people were expecting it to be, in part because consumer expenditures slid a bit, it only grew about 1.1 percent, uh, which was a little bit, which was quite a bit slower, actually, than the last quarter in 2017. Now, this is a little bit surprising because we've uh, passed some tax cuts at the end of 2017, so consumers are technically uh, having bigger paychecks, uh, but we think that gas prices have climbed sufficiently to largely eat those bigger paychecks. On, on the other hand, we should expect to see more business investment spending, but business investment spending for the U.S. as a whole has been relatively low. When the Atlanta Federal Reserve surveyed businesses across the country and asked them if they were going to change their business investment plans after the tax cuts, only about 25% indicated that they were going to increase their investment spending in 2018 and in 2019 as well, once the full picture of uh, the tax cuts came into effect. Um, largely, we find that the large businesses are investing more, about 40-45% of them plan to invest in 2019, but smaller and mid-sized businesses, only about 25% of them plan to invest in 2018 and in 2019. And I think the reason for that might be that a lot of these smaller and mid-sized businesses are pass-through entities. There's still a little bit of uncertainty on how the pass-through exceptions work. Uh, I think they're waiting on some guidance from IRS. So there is a decent chance for some upside risk to the GDP growth in the upcoming quarters, in particular business investment, especially among small and mid-sized uh, firms, uh, increases as a result of a little more clarity from the tax law. Back to some Arkansas numbers. Uh, new census data shows that over the past five years, nearly two-thirds of Arkansas counties lost population, mostly Delta counties. Uh, conversely, four counties, uh, Benton, Washington, Craighead, and Saline saw more than 5% growth. What's going to reverse this negative trend for those declining counties? I think those are some concerning statistics. If you think about all the things that population is important for, you know, the bigger population base, the better a city or a county is able to afford a lot of different things. Uh, all the things that you think about that the city government funds through sales taxes or property taxes, the schools, infrastructure, and when the population losses like this occur, it becomes harder and harder to fund all of those things that are important to the infrastructure, the cities and the schools are important to attract people to live in that particular region. So if you think about the places that are doing well up here in Northwest Arkansas, parts of Central Arkansas and in Northeast Arkansas around uh, Jonesboro, uh, these are places with strong booming economies, with diverse set of industries for their economies, and all of these regions are at various levels of working on different things uh, associated with placemaking, that is trying to make their cities and regions more attractive with a lot of amenities to convince people to live there. And so when we think about outside of those regions, places that are losing populations, uh, one of the things that cities in those regions could do is something that El Dorado has done in Union County. Now, Union County lost about 3.5% population during that five-year time period. But around that same time, uh, El Dorado only lost less than 
a percent of population. And El Dorado has done a lot of things right, in particular to incentivize people to move to El Dorado, to continue to stay in El Dorado. One of those things is the El Dorado Promise, uh, which promises um, a college education for graduates from the El Dorado high school system. Um, Another place in, our, in the United States that has tried that, Kalamazoo, Michigan, has done that since about 2005. They've actually seen their population increase, residential construction go up as more people move into Kalamazoo, Michigan uh, for a similar program that El Dorado, Arkansas has. But El Dorado has also invested in the quality of life amenities like the Murphy Arts District. There have recently been a lot of food and wine festivals and music festivals as well. So those are the kinds of things that small areas, El Dorado is about 18,000 something population, but it's a small city that is trying to stem the loss in population and they are, you know, having relative success with that compared to some of, the, compared to the county that they're in and compared to some of the surrounding cities. So other cities around the state, especially in more rural areas, need to look into what their competitive advantage is hone their competitive advantage by working with a community college or four-year college in their region to train a workforce around those competitive advantages, whether that's retirement communities, leisure and hospitality industries, manufacturing, whatever that particular competitive advantage is, and then work to build these quality of life amenities, support entrepreneurs, particularly with risk capital. That's something that the state and federal government can step in for. So there's a lot of different things communities can do to prevent the loss of population, to stem the loss of population, but it all starts with you know, producing a good strategic plan, identifying your core competencies, and then investing in them uh, along with improving the quality of life. Well, I think this next subject kind of folds into our previous topics of uh, Delta population loss and, and farm income and GDP. The Farm Bill failed in the House last week due to some splits over the SNAP program with Democrats, immigration reform with Republicans. Uh, farmers have been struggling for the last few years. Uh, is this lack of policy, is it not helping? So a couple of different things has happened, has happened with farm income. In particular, commodity prices have gone down over the last several years. There is an increase in the supply of most commodities, which push their prices down. And there are fewer and fewer buyers for these commodities. So when the number of buyers reduces, they get larger. They get to push prices down to the uh, producers that are producing all of these different commodities. So the share that farmers are getting from growing their crops uh, as a percentage of the final product of whatever that is, wheat to bread or corn to tortillas or whatever it is, is constantly shrinking. And that matters to farm incomes because they've continued to decline. Uh, they're very often the median farm income from farm only income across the United States is negative for the households. The only way those households make money is off of off farm income. So that's particularly concerning given that the farm bill has you know failed for now at least. It's not due till September, so I think there's a little more time for Congress to get this right. But it is planting season right now, and so farmers want some certainty about what those protections uh, are going to be. In the Farm Bill, there's a lot of uncertainty of what the level of those protections, crop insurance, conservation programs, et cetera, are going to be. And that coincides with a lot of uncertainty that we're seeing around tariffs on corn, on cotton, on rice, on soy beans and soy meal. So, uh, all of these things, you know, the combination of the tariffs and lack of certainty on what the crop insurance payments would be in case these tariffs do affect farm incomes, what are those price supports going to be? Farmers would like to know that while it is planting season right now. So it is particularly important that Congress not wait till September to uh, address the farm bill, but actually give some certainty farmers around planting season right now. He's Mervyn Jebaraj, economist with the University of Arkansas Walton College of Business Center for Business and Economic Research. Thanks, Mervyn. Thank you.